Somewhere around 1200 BC, the world history changed. The great civilizations of the Bronze Age faced an unprecedented crisis that eventually resulted in the destruction of the global economy and societies. The next few centuries were later came to be known as the world's first known dark age, for there were few records written during this time period. Gone were the scribal traditions, megapolis and global trade that flourished during the Bronze Age. There were many reasons that were proposed by scholars for the collapse. Internal rebellions, earthquake storms, drought, famine, and cultural innovations such as the creation of a class of private merchants and a military shift from chariotry to infantry warfare. But one of the more intriguing proposals for the change was the invasion of the Sea Peoples. The modern umbrella term Sea Peoples was first coined by Maspero in 1881 based on the Rook's term Pupil de la Mar which literally means peoples of the sea. The Rook used the term to describe invaders of Egypt during Pharaoh Ramesses III's reign portrayed on the second pillar reliefs at Medinet Habut. Three distinct events became the markers for identifying sea people groups within the Egyptian archive. The aforementioned attacks against Pharaoh Ramesses III in 1179 BC and 1176 BC and an earlier invasion of Egypt by the Libyan king Mertanye during Pharaoh Mernetah's reign in around 1208 BC where he employed some sea people groups as mercenaries. From this distinction, the nine sea people's anonyms are Luka, Shurden, Shekelesh, Teresh, Ekwesh, Denyan, Weshesh, Cheker, and Palisit. The Sea People's involvement to the Late Bronze Age collapse are inscribed in several primary written records, namely from Egyptian, Ugaritic, and Hittite sources. One example is in the inscription on the walls of the Pharaoh Ramesses III's mortuary temple at Medinet Habut, where it was written, the foreign countries made a conspiracy in their islands. All at once, the lands were removed and scattered in the fray. No land could stand before their arms, from Kate, Kode, Karkamesh, Arzawa, and Alashia on being cut off at one time. A camp was set up in one place in Amuru. They desolated its people and its land was like that which has never come into being. They were coming forward towards Egypt while the flames were prepared before them. Their confederation was the Palisade, Cheker, Shekelesh, Danuna, and Weshesh. Lands united. They laid their hands upon the lands as far as the circuit of the earth, their hearts confident and trusting. The Sea People's attacks were also found written in secondary sources, meaning written sources that were written hundreds of years after the incident. One example is Homer's Odyssey, composed around 750 BC, that mentioned about attacks by Achaeans on the Egyptian kingdom, which are reminiscent of the attacks portrayed in primary written sources. While the textual evidences are few, the non-textual evidences for the Sea People's Invasion narrative are plenty. Historians have attributed the sudden appearance of Asian-style architecture, Asian-style bichrome and Mycenaean tree sea pottery, and Asian-style loom weights in the Eastern Mediterranean region where Turkey is currently located as indication for the presence of the previously foreign groups of Sea Peoples. The artifact's origin can be traced back to mainland Greece and Crete with a probable transition through Cyprus or the Anatolian littoral, and they appeared in Iron Age Philistine settlements such as the Philistine Pentapolis, to which it became synonymous with Philistine material culture. Most scholars, however, agree that the movement of the Sea Peoples was not the result of a single invasion event as the Egyptian archives seem to portray but a long process consisting of several phases lasting at least 50 years. So, who are the Sea Peoples? Researchers employed linguistic, archaeological, literary, and geographical methodologies to assist them in uncovering the Sea Peoples' homeland. One method used to identify the origin of the Sea Peoples is to find a historical connection with the Sea Peoples' anonyms. As the term anonym suggests, the Sea Peoples can be portrayed as groups of people within shared ethnicities. Hall distinguishes a number of indicia that constitute an ethnicity, which are race, language, religion, and shared customs. 
there are some grey areas in utilising this methodology. The indicia that were proposed are not definite criterions for in-group conclusion because they may change. For example, when an entire ethnic group choose to speak a different language. We know that this have happened before, with the case of the Vikings that had raided France and eventually settled there. An ethnic group may also choose not to distinguish themselves by any form of ethnic indicia. This means that a person can be of an ethnicity by virtue of his own belief that he is of that ethnicity and calling himself that ethnicity, which was an observation made by Hall of the Lue people in Thailand. The idea of a shared ethnicity can also be from an ethic or emic perspective. An emic perspective takes the point of view from within the social group, while an ethic perspective takes the point of view of an external observer of the social group. The epigraphical and literary resources that depicts the sea peoples are mainly from an ethic perspective as they are recorded from the perspective of outsiders. Recognizing this ethic perspective is important because it tells us that the indicia that constitute each sea people's group lie in the perspective of the external scribes, in this case the Egyptian scribes, and that the sea people's group or other external groups may have different indicia to group the sea peoples. Hence, this leads to another possibility which is that other anonyms could be used to call the sea peoples. These other anonyms could be exonyms which are ending names called by other external groups or endonyms, which are ending names called by members within the group. For example, while majority of the world refer to people from Germany as Germans, Germans refer to themselves as Deutsch. To identify a historical ending group, we can reconstruct distribution patterns of language groups, analyze and group written and cultural artifacts, and assume that the nucleus of this ending entity is lurking in the background. In the following series about the sea peoples that will be published, we will be looking at written attestations and theories as to who each of these various sea peoples are. If you would like to see more of such videos uh, and content, please do leave a like, follow uh, and subscribe to my channel or follow my Instagram at the 123 and uh, if you would like as well, you can follow my blog post at uh, onetravelandguides.blogspot.com With this, uh, thank you for your time again and I'll see you in the next video.